Hello and welcome. This is Apostle Stephanie Harris, and today we will be talking a bit more about our Christian priesthood. And in answer to the question I know is on your mind, yes, every believer is called to serve God in the new covenant priesthood to testify of Christ. There is a massive shift taking place in regards to how believers perceive the Christian priesthood. And in this teaching, we'll be looking into what it means to have a Christian priesthood and what God's expectations are of us regarding the spiritual priesthood. We'll also be going over an article published by Chief Apostle Eric von Andersek entitled The Priesthood of the Flesh. So if you'd like to read along, the link to that article is posted right below this video. But before we jump into the article, let's begin by first looking at the word priesthood. What is a priesthood? The first thing that comes to your mind is probably an image of a priest from the Old Testament dressed up in his priestly vestments and offering sacrifices in the temple. But that's not really an image that any of us can relate to. And luckily, that's also not what God is expecting of us in the Christian priesthood. When we speak about our Christian priesthood, we are speaking about how we serve the Lord. How do you worship God? How do you minister unto Him? Reading the Bible, you'll notice that God has always been very specific about how He wants to be worshipped. During this, the first covenant of Moses, God gave people the Ten Commandments and the priests had to offer physical sacrifices on a physical altar. There was a physical temple and physical tools and articles used in worship. But the first covenant was a representation of what was to come and pointed towards what would take place in a spiritual sense during the second covenant. The Levitical priesthood of the first covenant that God made with Moses was a type and a shadow of the second covenant priesthood that would be established by Jesus Christ. Where the priesthood of the first covenant was very physical in every way, the second covenant priesthood of Christ is completely spiritual. The temple, the altar, the sacrifices and the tools we use are now all spiritual. We can read about this in Colossians chapter 2 verses 21 and 22 where Apostle Paul says, Touch not, taste not, handle not, which all are to perish with the using. Jesus Christ came to establish a better covenant for us, with better promises than that of the first covenant of Moses. In Hebrews chapter 8, verses 6 and 7, we read, But now has he, and here Apostle Paul is referring to Christ, But now has he obtained a more excellent ministry, by how much also he is the mediator of a better covenant, which was established upon better promises, for if that first covenant had been faultless, then should no place have been sought for the second. Through the death and resurrection of Jesus Christ, God concluded the first covenant of Moses and established the second covenant of Christ for our worship. Where the priesthood of the first covenant was exclusive to only those of the tribe of Levi, we see that now, in the second covenant, God has called all believers to function in a spiritual priesthood to testify of Christ through priesthood prophecy. Let's look at some scripture references that brings this out. In 1 Peter chapter 2, verse 5, Apostle Peter writes to the saints, saying, You also, as lively stones, are built up a spiritual house, a holy priesthood, to offer up spiritual sacrifices acceptable to God by Jesus Christ. And in verse 9 it says, but you are a chosen generation, a royal priesthood, a holy nation, a peculiar people, that you should show forth the praises of him who has called you out of darkness into his marvelous light. So having read that, keep in mind that when we speak of our Christian priesthood, we are talking about our service to God, and our spiritual sacrifices of prophecy is a reciprocation back to God as we testify of Christ, who is the perfect gift and sacrifice. So now, let's have a look at the specific problem that God is addressing. Reading the article, you'll notice that the problem God is bringing to our attention here through the stewardship of Chief Apostle Eric is how the natural man or the carnal man presents a barrier to priesthood prophecy. Let's start by reading the first part of the article entitled The Priesthood of the Flesh. And here Apostle Eric starts off by saying, Knowing the present confusion, that exist in the church about Christian priesthood, we should pause here and talk a bit about how Christians are trying to minister to God through the observance of Moses, the traditions of man, the private interpretation of scripture, and how this produces a false priesthood, the priesthood of the flesh. Why do we call it the priesthood of the flesh? 
because it focuses faith on the issues of the flesh. When we say the flesh, we are basically talking about the carnal man. End quote. So here Chief Apostle Eric is pointing out how some believers are substituting the true Christian priesthood with the priesthood of the flesh. In other words, they are worshipping God in ways that he didn't sanctify for their faith. They desire to worship God in a meaningful way and desire to experience the power and gifts of God. But because they were never properly educated to function in the Christian priesthood, their faith will continue to be unfruitful and thus they are not able to partake of the promises and fullness of Christ. Before we continue, let's also take a quick look at what is meant by the term the flesh or the carnal man. And here I'd like to read you an excerpt from Chief Apostle Eric's glossary where he expounds a bit more on this term for our understanding. It reads, When the Bible talks about the flesh, it's not talking about our outward form, but it talks about those things which are common to man. The flesh is also called the natural man because it follows the rhythm of our first birth, which we all inherited from Adam, and is the pattern we leave behind in Christ. The flesh is also called the old man. The old nature identifies the former knowledge, tools of expression, carnal perception, and habits of mind that we formerly found to be productive when in the kingdom of darkness, but now find of no value as we are being productive with Christ's new knowledge, his new tools, and a new perspective from God's throne. The flesh is also called the carnal man. The flesh is enmity or abomination with God because it follows the course of this world. The flesh is enmity with God because it follows the rudiments of this world. Let's read a few scripture references. Colossians 2 verse 8 says, Beware lest any man spoil you through philosophy and vain deceit after the tradition of men, after the rudiments of the world, and not after Christ. And in 1 Corinthians chapter 2 14 it says, But the natural man receives not the things of the Spirit of God, for they are foolishness unto him, neither can he know them, because they are spiritually discerned. And in Romans 8 verse 7 it says, The carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. Amen. It's helpful for us to know the true definitions of these terms for our understanding of the scriptures. So let's get back to the article and continue where we left off. Have you ever noticed that whenever there are promises made to the flesh for its security, the carnal man pays attention? And it seems as if believers go into an immediate hypnotic state and gobble up the teaching. There are many voices in the church that each year repackage and rehash old promises under new faces. Promises such as the breaking of generational and poverty curses, doors and seasons of God's favor opening to you, achieving financial prosperity, living the abundant life, cancelling your debt, designing your life, changing your world, changing your circumstances, living God's best, and the pathway to success. The carnal mind reaches for these things. End quote. Why does the carnal mind reach for these things? Because attached to all of these, there is a promise for the soul to enter into rest. But it's a false promise that results in a false rest, and that's why this form of prophecy is abusive to believers. It is not only abusive, but it is also something called psychophysy. And this is a word that the Lord gave Chief Apostle Eric von Andersek to describe prophecy that comes from one's own heart. This term combines the word psychology with the word prophecy, and it really assists us to understand how false prophecy addresses the psychology of man as if it were by the voice of God. The soul that is not in covenant with God and not functioning in the spiritual priesthood will always be longing for rest because God designed our souls to only find rest and completion in Him. Christ is our rest. It seems contradictory, but as we daily labor in our Christian priesthood, we enter into Christ's rest, which is an experience that is tangible to the soul. And you are able to discern when a promise of false rest is offered to be your hope instead of Christ. Okay, let's continue reading from the article and we'll see the contrast brought out here. It is in the priesthood of Jesus Christ in which the spiritual man functions. It is in the priesthood 
that the spiritual man is dressed for battle and trained in heavenly warfare tactics. 2 Timothy 2 verse 4 reads, No man that wars entangles himself with the affairs of this life, that he may please him who has chosen him to be a soldier. When the Bible talks about spiritual warfare, the Lord is bringing to our attention that there is a war taking place in the mind, and Satan started it. Satan's aim is to occupy your mind with uncertainty, fear, and doubt. He wants you to place your confidence in the doctrines that promise peace and security for the flesh. God gave you the Christian priesthood as a tool to fight the battle that goes on in the mind. If you don't want to be ruled by depression, worry, anger, doubt, condemnation, and confusion, you absolutely need to know about the power of the Christian priesthood. As Apostle Paul taught, For the weapons of our warfare are not carnal, but mighty through God to the pulling down of strongholds. That is from 2 Corinthians chapter 10, verse 4. The point we are making here in this lesson is that we have to work at untangling faith from the carnal mind and from the carnal man. We do that by functioning in the Christian priesthood. End quote. Amen. Here Chief Apostle Eric mentions spiritual warfare and points out how God gave us the Christian priesthood as a tool to fight the battle that daily takes place in the mind. In Ephesians chapter 6 verse 12 we read, For we wrestle not against flesh and blood, but against principalities, against powers, against the rulers of the darkness of this world, against spiritual wickedness in high places. Our battlefield is therefore not in the flesh but on a spiritual battlefield. And by the Christian priesthood, we are equipped to fight this battle and overcome by the power of the Spirit. When we have the foundation of truth laid in the heart and we labor with the tools God provided for our faith, the Spirit of God is there to empower your faith that we may discern Satan's sowing in our minds by weighing our thoughts on the scale of truth and overcome. When believers transition to priesthood prophecy to testify of Christ, they approach God not on their own terms, but on the terms of the covenant and are made partakers of the promises and fullness of Christ. This becomes their new reality and sets them free from the bondage of Satan's deceitful promises. Through priesthood prophecy, a hope is made living as we experience the power and life of Christ in the soul. Okay, let's get back to the article and read the last section. It has been said, that if we choose to live a half-spiritual and half-carnal life, we jeopardize our victory in Christ. What does that mean to live a half-spiritual and half-carnal life? There is no such thing. The reason why Christians resort to these kinds of guessing games with faith is that they have not been taught about the Christian priesthood. It is in the priesthood that the spiritual man is born, nourished, grows, and gains strength because he expresses Christ. The priesthood is how Christianity is lived. Let's look at what the carnal mind is for a moment. When you were born into this world, Satan claimed you for his own, and a process of abuse began. Having experienced this abuse since birth, we respond to it as we would to any other kind of invasive abuse. We assume responsibility for it. Somehow, it must have been my fault. I am the one to blame. Coming into covenant, is like going to a new country or taking on a new identity. We are citizens of heaven and take on the identity of Jesus Christ. Because of this, people sometimes have the mistaken idea that by coming into covenant, that things will immediately change. The liberty we are promised in Christ is something we experience when we become active with the knowledge and tools of Christ, pointing again to the importance of being properly instructed in the faith. You must have a priesthood for the spiritual man in Christ to develop and the old man to die. And you must be instructed in the priesthood. The reality is that when you are converted, you carry with you all the abuses you suffered under Satan's hand. And while the healing does begin to take place, Satan will use every opportunity to use the same tactics against you as in the past, and even more so. Now that you understand that you have been abused, the question is, do you want it to go on? Well, no, of course you don't. But making a decision not to be abused does not change anything unless you learn these vital principles of the Christian priesthood.
Satan will do everything in his power to keep you dependent on him. So it is important to get to the point of discerning his tactics quickly and becoming strong in your training with the grace of God. The carnal man lives by the testimony of death that Satan seeks to perpetuate in him. But the spiritual man lives by the testimony of God and the perpetuation of God's light and kingdom in him. A person cannot live in both kingdoms. The purpose of the doctrine of Christ, the tools, and the priesthood of Jesus Christ is to make you functional in God's kingdom. End quote. Amen. That brings to mind the scripture in Matthew 6, 24, which says, No man can serve two masters. Here we can clearly see how and why the natural man presents a barrier to priesthood prophecy. The natural man is tethered to an entirely different kingdom, which functions according to an entirely different frame of knowledge and is empowered by a different source. All of these, which are contrary to God, the Holy Spirit cannot and will not bear witness to the record of the flesh, but will only confirm and empower the record and testimony of Jesus Christ. We read in Romans chapter 8, verses 5 to 8, For they that are after the flesh do mind the things of the flesh, but they that are after the Spirit, the things of the Spirit. For to be carnally minded is death, but to be spiritually minded is life and peace. Because the carnal mind is enmity against God, for it is not subject to the law of God, neither indeed can be. So then, they that are in the flesh cannot please God. Amen. We see here how absolutely vital the Christian priesthood is for our spiritual healing, discernment, and overcoming. And how important it is that we receive proper instruction in order to function in this priesthood of Christ. We need knowledge for faith, and God determined for that instruction to come through apostolic stewardship, in order to keep the knowledge of truth pure, so that nothing of man is added, and nothing of Christ is taken away. Praise God for the restoration that has taken place during this new apostolic season, as God restored truth back to the church, and again established his spiritual government of apostles, prophets, evangelists, pastors, and teachers as a gift and refuge to the church, with Christ being the head. In closing, I would like to share with you an edifying spiritual sacrifice of prophecy from a recent online post by Apostle Diane Suarto, and it reads, Grace is the voice of God, calling to awaken faith to come into covenant, to be joined to Christ to receive His perfect working of regeneration and renewing of the mind by which He restores our souls through the due process, according to His terms and yoke of apostolic stewardship, holy priesthood, and true prophecy. Amen, and thank you for listening today. And again, this is Apostle Stephanie Harris. And remember that true rest and completion is only found in Jesus Christ, and that the spiritual man seeks God's perspective in all things and serve him in spirit and in truth, according to the covenant priesthood that God provided for our faith.